Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to LA Dodger Report and my first video report for 2019. Sorry that it took a little bit of time for me to get here, but there were just a couple of things that were taking place on the personal side that took time away from me being able to come and report to you. Nevertheless, it worked out a bit for the better because it's given me a little bit more of a test sample size to have a look at the Dodgers and see how they're shaping up over a complete homestand and now one half of a travel um, stand. The Dodgers just completed a series with Colorado and they are now off to St. Louis and we'll see how they do up there. But um, what I'd like to do is bring you a couple of my observations early on in the season as they are and give my grades, give a report card, so to speak, to the Dodgers and where they stand. All right, so let's start off with starting pitching. They lost two starting pitchers right before the season began. They lost Clayton Kershaw and Rich Hill. But in a testament to the best starting rotation pitching depth in the majors, the Dodgers were ready and prepared to fill those gaps and really almost didn't miss a beat whatsoever. Hyun Jin Ryu stepped into the opening day breach and he has been looking less like a number three starter and has been looking like a number one ace. Ryu has been pitching very well. All right, so he's looking great. Um, Maeda and Walker Bueller have both produced uh, semi-iffy starts. Um, Bueller had a very abbreviated spring training, so he's kind of just getting up to regular season speed. His first outing, he looked great for about three innings and then just kind of imploded in the fourth. And his last outing, he again started out pretty strong and then just kind of ran out of gas. So we'll be looking for more from Bueller. And um, Kenta Maeda, the same thing, gave up home runs, three home runs he gave up in his uh, first time of pitching. And his second time in Colorado, where he's legend as a great pitcher, uh, at least uh, as far as having a good record for pitching in Colorado, which a lot of pitchers don't have. But either way, Maeda did not have such a great start uh, in Colorado, but he gutted up and he held on and he kept his team in the game. Part of what kept him in the game is defense. We'll talk about that in a second. Either way, those two pitchers, uh, Maeda and Bueller, both got it up when they needed to and pushed their way as far as they could. And they didn't really hurt their team that much. But because of those stumbles, we're going to give the Dodgers starting pitching a grade of B. They'll take a B because they really haven't hurt the Dodgers very much, but we would like to see them push deeper into a game all right now let's move on to offense and the offense this season is the story the dodgers offense is tearing up their opponents pitching and they are scoring like crazy in general the story is the dodgers offense and in particular you probably know by now the main story is cody ballinger and his red hot start. Cody and the Dodgers offense are setting records across the board for breakouts at the beginning of a season. So this big time offense is what's really helping the Dodgers when those starting pitchers struggle early and don't get deep into the game. This offense is scoring like crazy and um, what's helping them is they have further evolved. 
I'll go, I'll keep it real, and I'll say I didn't think the Dodgers could maintain such a heavy home run hitting ratio. I just didn't think they could do it. But we're now coming into the third season, and it's early yet, but they are showing that they are still a club that hits big bombs. And here's the difference, and here's the rest of the story. They have evolved in such a way with their brand new hitting coach that has still uh, got them hitting home runs, but he's also given them the eye, the hitting eye for situational hitting and for beating the shift. And this is resulting in singles, doubles, triples, extended rallies, men on base, and what's happened that has really pushed the Dodgers numbers up is last year where they hit a lot of home runs, but they were all solo home runs. This year, the Dodgers are hitting a lot of home runs with guys on base. And that is the difference in the offense. Crooked numbers on the scoreboard, and they are really beating up on other teams. Dodgers offensive grade to this point, A plus, baby. A plus. They really don't miss Yasiel Puig and Matt Kemp. They don't miss them at all. And another place where they're not missing those guys very much is on the defense, which let's move to. Defensively, the Dodgers are rock solid. Infield is set. Muncie at first base. Some people are still don't believe in Muncie at first. I think he's a great first baseman. Okay, great might be a big word, but he's pretty darn good. He's got cat-like reflexes over there. He catches short hops as good as anybody, and he doesn't have the long stretch of Cody Ballinger, but very few people do. Either way, Muncy's able to stretch and haul in balls, and he is a solid defense at first base. Um, he has flubbed a play, and so is Kike over at second base. Has also had a flubby <laughs> the other day. He forgot how many outs there were. But look, Kike is on his way to a gold glove season. Mark my words. I pushed for Kike to be the everyday second baseman last season. I didn't get my wish. But this year, he's the everyday second baseman. And he is proving dividends. And he is on his way to a gold glove season. Watch that guy play defense, and you're going to be seeing some good highlights. Who else is out there? The return of Corey Seager is now short up that infield. And Seager to Kike to, uh, to Muncie on double plays is starting to show flashes of the old Cesar Isturis to uh, Cora, to Alex Cora, when they used to have that flashy side of the infield. We're starting to see that kind of defense over there as well. The difference here is, is now uh, Kike and Seeger can hit. As to where uh, Cora and his students were kind of light, field, uh, light hitting but great fielding. All right, and who's over there at third? The solid vacuum cleaner, uh, JT, Justin Turner. He hasn't quite found his bat stroke quite yet. But he's uh, going to, we know that, and, he, and this is defense anyway, he's doing very well. The outfield isn't missing Kemp or Puig, not a bit. Cody Ballinger not only has stepped up his game with his bat, but he's brought the glove and he's flashing it. Cody's long legs and speed cover just as much ground in the outfield as Yasiel Puig, and he's making great catches and he's showing off his arm. Yesterday, he made a great throw to get one of the Rockies out at third base. So uh, we're not missing those guys. Defense is very solid. My grade, a couple of flubs on plays, but otherwise, A- minus for the defense. How about the bench? The bench is looking very solid. David Fries off the bench is hitting well which makes me just go like this and think about why in the heck did the Dodgers bench David Fries so much in the World Series? We might be calling ourselves World Series champions now if the Dodgers were smart enough in the World Series to let the guy play. He's coming off the bench now, and he is very well worth it. 
He's hitting very well. Who else is coming off the bench? Russell Martin. He's found his home run stroke, and he is playing agile defense behind the dish like a young man. We've seen him make some great plays behind the plate there. And the other day, he made a nice catch and a tag on a throw from Jock Peterson to get the man out at home. So Russell Martin doing very well as well. Finally, Verdugo coming off the bench, looking solid, looking fantastic with the bat. Personally, I wish that they would uh, switch Chris Taylor and make Taylor the guy on the bench and give Verdugo the starts. That's what I'd like to see. Bench grade, a solid A. Now it comes to the only reason almost why we've sweated bullets in far too many games this season. The bullpen. This isn't news, folks. The bullpen has been a question mark for a few years, and that's a large reason why we are not world's champs. That's a large reason why the Dodgers are second place finishers, because the front office doesn't think the bullpen needs help. Well, let's hope that they see it now, because this bullpen needs help. Um, Baez, iffy. Very iffy, very spotty. Jimmy, Jimmy Garcia, uh, even worse than iffy. Joe Kelly, the 23, $25 million man, so far was looking like crap, looking like a waste of money. Yesterday in Colorado, he got off his feet and he pitched like a two and two third innings, something like that. And he did pretty well for the first, uh, he got the third out of one inning, and then he pitched a full inning that was good, scoreless innings. And then the third inning, they sent him out for, and he ran out of gas. But I don't blame them for sending him out for that third inning to start because everybody behind him in that uh, bullpen just looks like dirt. They don't look worth anything. Dodgers pulled up Santana. Dennis Santana, he pitched and he did okay, and we also like his bat. I get the feeling we're going to see more of Santana. Um, so that bullpen really hurting us, and let's keep it real. Uh, Kenley Jansen, he's not dominant. He's not dominating. Uh, he's getting some outs, and he's getting there, but he's still giving us cause to bite our nails a little bit too much, considering the huge contract that they gave him. Kenley still has us worrying. So the um, report card on the bullpen is going to come in at a D, and I'm being generous. That's the only Achilles heel that the Dodgers have. Pretty soon, when Kershaw and Hill return, the Dodgers are going to have to make some decisions about that bullpen, and I'm guessing... Um, Urias is going to go to the bullpen, and I'm hoping not, but I'm guessing Maeda might have to go, or perhaps Stripling, uh, because everybody else in that bullpen is looking like they're lost. Perhaps they'll gain their footing and they'll find their way. It's early in the season, but that's where we're at. Four-fifths of the ball club looking great, and one very important part of the, part of the team. Four-fifths of the team looking great, and one very important part of the team looking horrible and it's like you've got a bad thumb you've got four great fingers here but how much can you do without an opposable thumb so we need that bullpen to get straight and when that happens we're going to be looking at a very 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 good ball club all right thanks for watching see you next time la dodger report peace